Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. It's your weekly dose of wrestling and mayhem, and it's a show. It's the Wrestling Mayhem Show 522 at Sorgatron. Mike Sorg here in Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, 10 years down with this action every Tuesday night until that WWE decides they want to take us on with their own live programming of some sort. But that's a whole other discussion that we'll get to in a moment. With me from San Antonio, Texas, he is the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. He is at Amen 2. Please, Amen Peyton. Hi. But nothing else? I, I, no witty intro. I'm, I'm terrible at these. I'm, I've, I've lost all my wittiness. God. WWE has taken that away from us because of this <laughs> news. That we'll WWE through. ruins everything. Also with us, uh, another guy that WWE stole a piece of his soul because he's the only one with a future Endeavor letter from the WWE on this lineup. He is Mad Mike in Poughkeepsie, New York. Does anyone else feel a draft in here? Oh. It feels drafty, like some kind of draft. Is... No, uh, actually, yeah, I, uh, I like it. It does feel really drafty. I think I may have to split, actually. Uh, you know, Eamon, um, I would also oh. watch out because you don't want people pulling on your brand extensions. Ah, yes. Yes. Um, uh, oh, oh, God. <laughs> and those moans. Stop. Those moans are coming from wheels. Somebody needs to check on him. I need to make sure there's no windows in front of his face. He's he's uh he's down in California, oh. PA, representing the Renegade Wrestling Alliance. The sound engineer over there, RWAlive.com. How you doing? I'm doing just fine. I mean, well, if there's gonna be a split, I guess it'll be a new day. I really hope this is done now. Uh, but anyways, this is your Wrestling Mayhem Show. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Check out more action over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to us on audio and video formats, all linked over there. You can drop us a line to 412-206-WMS0 or the email address. Good times! Good times, Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Join us every Tuesday around 8 p.m. Eastern Time, live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com for hours and hours and hours, and I can't even stop, of wrestling entertainment and interviews. Hell, that tonight uh, we're actually going to have uh, on the line for Indie Mayhem Show, we're double dipping here, G Raver for after returning, and DC Bentley of Wild West, who he was actually going to be part of Global Force Wrestling here in the Pittsburgh area uh, this Friday. So uh, stay tuned for those releases on Indie Mayhem Show, also at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Also, shouts out to our friends Friends on the Patreon supporting the show, putting their money where their mouths, where are our mouths and microphones and podcasts and downstreams are. Uh, Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Thank you so much to our friends and longtime Patreon supporters, uh, Antonio Garza uh, of the Wrestling Re- Revolution.com and our friend, Bo and of course the matthew and jennifer carlin's uh foundation for podcast betterment alex cars of uh power to the smarks of uh, occupy pro wrestling and the great podcast there as well as ed burke joining us as well all of you guys have been supporting the show for a good while uh helping us out helping us actually and it has been paying for things like the server like some dot coms and some ads to help extend this uh, uh mayhem family so thank you so much for everybody supporting there you get something special james james uh, uh from uh 8-bit evolution some great 8-bit video game uh developers and making some cool stuff over there uh tells us about his hulk hogan problem Yes, find out about that <laughs> on WMS 522 Gold this week. So let's get into the stories of the week. Let's get into what's going on in the wrestling world, as has been highly, highly punned during those introductions. You know, uh, sort of all the social media stuff you can find us on, the one place you can find us is Tumblr. <laughs> what? <laughs> Remember that? Remember what? that one year they did the thing where they picked him out of the Tumblr? Oh, fuck, ad. <laughs> God oh. damn it, Amen. 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 No. Oh wow. Uh, Amen. Amen. You are not 
the first draft pick. I think Eamon, I, Eamon, I think you uh, beat Mad Mike's fit steps just by getting around to that joke. Uh, so thank you. Oh. Thank you Sorry. Sorry, that, that was more like a long walk off a short pier. Well, That's uh, what that uh, well I mean, I, I, I'm just happy I'm, I'm get, I got the joke out. Everything else is going to be supplemental. <laughs> Son, he brought it back. He brought it back. I'm on fire tonight. I don't care what any of you say. He brought I it am back. So glad. I am so glad Lunchbox is not on because oh. he would have left us by now. Oh, oh no, would've... don't worry. I, I, put, I put plenty of puns when I email panel right. Just plays oh, on words. Oh, and because oh, they're emails, he has to read them. It's he sounds the so disgusted when he reads those two. Anyways, wrestling. Yes, there's a draft coming up. Uh, we plan to do something very interesting with the draft, and we're going to preview that here uh, later in the show. But uh, there was an announcement last week that uh, coming up, I believe it's July 19th, SmackDown will be live on USA every Tuesday night. You sons of bitches. Um, every Tuesday night. And we have some ideas about maybe how <laughs> we're going to handle that around here at the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Oh, uh, we're but- going to have... We're gonna have an eighteen-hour midweek war. <laughs> we're gonna have. I, we're gonna Fuck, select. Man. We're gonna select but, one uh, person to break into the show with breaking news and watch SmackDown. Is no, what we're we gonna are do. not going to do that. No, I just like I don't want Impact to be spoiled. I don't want SmackDown to be spoiled. Well, well, that's uh, there's an easy solution and not you know have that for the midweek war. We just cut out the shows that are on Tuesdays. Oh. Oh, They're dead no. to us. Amen. They're dead to Amen. us. I don't want to watch Impact anymore, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> we need it. We need a Tuesday. We need a Tuesday shift. We do. We like, wheels. You're not doing anything on Tuesday except you know watching what? us. Or you should just move this show to Wednesday. <laughs> no, no, we're not. No, no, man. Or no. Let's move it to Thursdays. No, absolutely not. No. Well, I guess hey guys, it's pretty free. Guys, let's just do a live show during every wrestling show. <laughs> <laughs> during all of them. We'll do, during one, Raw. We'll do a three-hour show. We'll do a three-hour show on Mondays during Raw. We'll do one two-hour show during SmackDown. One two-hour show concurrently during Impact. Let's one one-hour show during Lucha Underground. Stay up one one-hour show during Ring of Honor. Whenever they upload the correct episode, we'll stay up till two a.m. to do a New Japan Pro Wrestling show for all the shows <laughs> they do. And you know what? For the hell of it, let's also bring in cars, and we can watch fifteen-minute Chikara clips and do a podcast during that. All of it. All of it. All of it, and also. So are you okay? Yeah. With that? A nine-episode binge podcast watch of Swerved Season 2. Uh, no, I'm okay with that. I'm all good. Um, but no, uh, no. well, I, we say draft, but they. here's the thing. They haven't announced that there's going to be a draft. No, so they just said a split. They just say – yeah, they say that there's going – they may – they say they say that the, the shows will each have distinct rosters, which is super kind of – like oh it's a brand split but it's not but it kind of is but kind of that, that is but. that is that is very specific language isn't it? Mm-hmm. It is distinct rosters. How could you yeah. twist the word distinct? Yeah, you can't. Nope. Mm-mm. Where the where are my lawyers at in the Mayhem Nation? Chris um, Larusso, Sork. help me out. Sork, there's one upstairs. No, no, she isn't. No, she's a paralegal. Because honestly, but still, I you're right. Genuine, she could help. I'm a genuine fear. That the fact that they aren't explicitly saying that there's going to be a draft yet, that they're not going to do a draft. I think and it, then, it's and then and then they're not going to tell anybody, and everyone's going to get pissed off. I think I think it's going to be some backroom deals. We're going to get a night where where everybody's trying to schmooze Stephanie and, and, and Shane, and they keep going back into the boardroom, and and the, there's the 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 the, the roster selection process is on the door, and that's all you have to do. And there's a mystery about what's going to happen, who's going to go where, and they just announce like the top twenty people. Not in, <laughs> like it's not a draft per se, but they just announce it. Like, you know, what's fancy coming to SmackDown, boom, this person, staying on Raw, boom, this person. You know what I mean? And and Sorry. maybe mix in some new NXT people that haven't been on the main roster, and everybody's relatively happy. You know what I would like to see? The NHL All-Star Game does this thing where they have two captains, and then the two captains just pick people for their rosters. Like, fucking third grade soccer 
That's what I want. Yeah. yeah. I, I want so, one. I want one captain for each team. I want uh, Roman Reigns as one captain. I want like Seth Rollins as another captain or something like that. I don't know. Like you, I like, you have a, like you have a mat, like you have a battle royal with twenty guys, and the last two people are the captains, and whoever wins that match gets first pick. Hmm. Hmm. I think that would be fun as shit. But that is something like Lucha Underground would do, not WWE. We're probably just going to get the randomizer again that we all hate. Which I don't like that they do. I wish if they're going to do a draft that they take it back to the Ric Flair Vince McMahon draft where they actually draft people. Or the Stephanie, B- Stephanie McMahon Eric Bischoff one. Not the random button yeah. that it's IWC totally uses? Bad. Yeah, but- we don't like the Price is Right thing. Like, do, 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 do. no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Stop. Sure. Heat Slater. Ah. Oh. Well, no, because you never get Heat Slater. <laughs> always, when you do the randomizer, it's always top guys. Because the one I think you're thinking of is the one with Eric Bischoff and Paul Heyman, where they were doing the thing where they were pulling balls from a tumbler of like draft picks. And in, but instead of getting big names, you would get like, oh, I got uh, Rene Dupree. Cool. Like, you know, like stuff like that. Like, oh, I got Zach Ryder. Because when you do the randomizer, you know you're just going to get the big names. Yeah. Yeah. You have to have that sense of possibility like you do with the Royal Rumble. Anybody could win this. Bushwhacker Luke could completely become the number one contender to the WWF title. Wait, maybe not. You know, I mean, like, you you know Hulk Hogan's going to be at the end there. Uh, But, you know, you pretend it's for real. And you do throw a Heath Slater spot in there. See, I, I think they're not announcing how they're doing it yet because Stephanie and Shane are still playing nice. Mm-hmm. And I think they planted the seeds for how that's going to turn at some point, and then they're going to be at odds with each other. Hopefully, yeah, because it's still like super. Like I, I was talking with Sorg last night on the Raw wrap up, like about how like that segment with the New Day last night was like very vague. They're like New Day explicitly being like, "So what's going to happen?" And they're being like, "We don't know, but you, we'll tell you when we know." Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, see, the thing is, I think. They had to do something like that just to address it because they made that announcement super randomly, like super duper randomly, and with, on with, a random and, to go. and like, on on a random bad um, green screen. Did you guys see the Stephanie and Shane thing? Yeah, it's yeah. like yeah. really that so work, huh? It, it, it was almost like they they just flipped the, from the Shining Stars promo to the St- Shane and Stephanie thing. That's true. Uh, Wheels, you got something to say? Yeah, we got a problem. Hmm. The YouTube's not running. Well, we'll work on that. Don't worry about that for the live sh- for the show right now. <laughs> it should be going, but we'll see. Uh, but anyways, um, podcast land. Well, yeah, you know, I, I, I think I forgot to hook, hook up the Facebook while we're at it too. So, eh, whatever. Uh, but anyways. <laughs> oh well. Eh, hey, I'll come hey, back this later. Is great talking. Yeah, go back. It's just us hanging out. Just those guys. And probably yeah, discussion yeah, yeah. with we, all the we were, just, we're just talking about a draft. We're feeling a little drafty. You know, now, yep, now yep. I have a question. It's a very important question, and I want your guys' opinion on this. Okay. Where does Triple H fall with this? On his quad. He, yeah, because no? he's been missing for a while. Well, no, not not just the fact that he's been missing. Does he count as a performer? He could. Oh. Can he be yeah. drafted to Shane's show away from his wife? Here's the thing. Ooh. I think I think that, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like, could you imagine Shane in charge of Triple H? Because he did just recently sign um, a performer's contract. I know they all. I know like Shane and Stephanie both do that because they are technically performers. But I was gonna say, I think you could kind of argue that Shane could also be considered a performer, at least as of recent. You know, because the last match Triple H had was the same show as Shane and wrestled on. So I, I think you could. It's it's a slippery slope. I think that could be cool like i i, I like the mm-hmm. idea of doing something like that but it also means i don't know if triple h is going to become a regular performer and also i think that's quite interesting like in the fact that when we get around to like say wrestlemania season like and we have a lot of reliance usually wrestlemania season on performers like triple h like brock lesnar like talents like that like are they just gonna float you know what i mean i ass- i mean I assume they'll be up for whatever kind of brand separation thing they do, whether it's a draft or the randomizer. I assume guys like Brock Lesnar, The Undertaker, 
are going to be part of that because they're on the active roster. Because I think, but I think when you draft somebody, like, say if it is a draft, if you draft someone like that, you then expect them to be on part of the roster like normal, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, also, are they going to split the damn title again? Are they going to no, keep I it? I hope up? not. I don't think so. Yeah, please no. No, because when the when they did the first draft, they had the WWE champion float back and forth between shows. That's the best option. They did yeah, that with the, like Roman Reigns can be drafted to a show, and then once he loses the belt, he's on that show. Yeah, he has to stay where he was well, drafted. Because well, I, so, no, yeah. well, I what I always liked that they did was that when they started in the beginning, whoever was champion f- was floating basically between both shows. Right. And say they lost the belt, they the general manager basically that's a petition, and then he gets to choose where he goes. But they did, I believe they did that with Triple H. They did that with um, Brock Lesnar. No, not Brock Lesnar. No, no, Brock was signed. Brock. Oh, I'm. I, you know, I might be thinking of. But didn't like he like Stephanie. jump or something? Like, or maybe I don't know. It was a confusing time, but yeah. Like it's. It was, I, I, I remember like, Brock was exclusively SmackDown. Yeah, Rock but was he started on Raw. But I thought he started on Raw. He started on Raw, and then they had the draft. No, they had no. The draft happened like right when he debuted. Mm-hmm. No, it didn't. Yeah. No, 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 no. Because <laughs> you're thinking, you're thinking that Stephanie and Bischoff had a draft. They didn't have a draft. Vincent and Rick had the draft. They were just elected as general managers. As they yeah, were. but Vince and Rick had their stuff happen in 2003. Brock debuted in 2002. No, they no. That was two thousand two. So we've been through this before, okay. and the, I, I think there's more questions. <laughs> like, like, are we going to see uh, um, split pay per views? Right? Are we going to see that kind of stuff going? God, I, I mean, not. I mean, yeah, I know it gets weird because, like, well, maybe the the it's a little too thin. Are they all going to be but combined? Can look at some of those SmackDown pay per views in like two thousand four. Or is like, it, or is it going to be that weirdly loose thing, like when they kind of started? coming back together right when the draft when the draft kind of dissolved i'm like well i guess everybody's together again because they were super shows and then they were just raw with everybody on them again i think we'll just have two like regular pay-per-views and um two different announced teams that way we can get like morrow on on pay-per-views that'd be nice and i mean i know you wouldn't want to have two pay-per-views because with this like as of late, you got people getting injured so much, it would almost kind of hurt you if, like, one side of your split was getting more hurt than the other. And it's like, yeah, what do but we do? but when they do that, they can float somebody over. Oh God, he's a raw guy, and here he is, you know, because there's a gap there, right, that needs to be filled. You know, they can actually they can, that's a good that'd be a they easily little trick, yeah. And, and they did before; they easily floated people as needed between the two. Right. I also think it's beneficial if they split those writing teams out uh, a bit more because there's too much going on. You're seeing that, mm-hmm. right? Um, we're, we're 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 seeing that between. Um, I'm getting a little bit of feedback from one of you guys here. I think, uh, but uh, you know, I I think that's 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 something that's going to help in the long run. I mean, look at the great stuff we got on SmackDown, like back in the 2000s. Like mm-hmm. it was the show. Like the Heyman and Stephanie McMahon eras were like the best years of that show, you know. And then well, Raw has also, good years. I think also a big part of that was that Heyman, at least for what we know, was given a lot of direction yeah. with SmackDown and being he was basically running the show both on camera and behind the scenes in a sense. I like the idea of say we do have Shane and Stephanie run their respective brands if they actually do run their respective brands. Right. You know, I think because it, it's been known for years that Shane ha, ha, always had like a ton of ideas of stuff that he wanted to do. Uh, he was like the one of the original people that wanted to like head up the uh, the uh, ECW revival back in 2006. Like he, you know, he has ideas clearly. And, mm-hmm. and, and you know, we've been sort of vaguely touching on like the whole, oh, Shane McMahon being a more crucial part of how the show is run. What if we actually finally go with it and say, you know what, Shane, you get the show, do with it what you want. It could be. I mean, and I think that's, I, I know maybe we're, you know, some people are down on the whole, uh, you know, Shane and Steph McMahon's, you know, just like same as it ever was. Right. But okay. 
it makes sense and it'd be awesome and fits. I mean, not awesome, but it fits to have the Shane show versus the Steph show. You know, yeah, and, 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 and plus, and, those people who are angry about are not offering up better suggestions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's it's not like we have a bunch of guys that could do it like we did back in the day. Like we don't have an Eric Bischoff, we don't have a Paul Heyman, we don't have a William Regal on the main roster. We well, don't I have also, guys that could be like a general manager of a show. Well, and I also I think you've set a standard now. WWE has set a standard for itself where you have to have a general manager. Mm-hmm. And you, or you have to have some authority figure that is running the show because when have we never like since Vince you know since Vince in 98 when have we not had some figure of power running the show uh, never for more than like one week like, yeah. like sometimes there, like there will be no general manager and the inmates are running the asylum or whatever but we've never yeah, had I- like like we even had a fucking computer yeah, <laughs> because they were like, we don't have anybody. Let's get this fake computer because we need somebody to fill that role. Like that's a role that n- now they have created for themselves that they need to ha- always have filled. They and, should just get Lorenzo Lamas. Yeah, but I think that's both, a, that's both a good and a bad thing. Like it, it, you know, they've created something where it's like, well, we have to always have something. Amen. You're absolutely right. Lorenzo Lamas is absolutely both a good and a bad thing. Um, but <laughs> aside from that, uh, we'll see how this goes. Uh, I'm sure we're going to guess and pontificate and we'll get hopefully details little by little here. We have a month and a half until this thing goes down. Do, do you guys uh, think mm-hmm. NXT is going to be a part of it? Well, that was the other yeah. talking point. Yeah. Cause, cause the next takeover is called NXT takeover. The end. I really hope that's a reference to Joe and Baylor more than anything. I would be so sad if they're gonna like end NXT or something at that point. Well, no, I don't. I don't think they'd end NXT. They just might move it to Tuesday nights on USA. Well, because there was obviously the stuff on, like there was that coupled with Triple H tweeting it and saying like, where do we go from here? Uh, there was talk that the Brooklyn tickets that they usually have for SummerSlam weekend got taken down, and now they're back up. Like, it so. I don't know what's happening. Because yeah, we usually get an on sale date for like SummerSlam and stuff like that around the same time as TakeOver tickets. And there's been no announcement yet. Hmm. So I'm just hmm. curious because I definitely wanted to go to TakeOver again this year. <laughs> yeah. And, and oh, that, yeah. that'd be, that could be, that's an interesting move. That would be a curious move since. It's like the hottest thing going on, you know. So what and are you going to do point there? Of it is the brand, right? I mean, like people are 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 supporting it because of the brand of NXT, not necessarily because of. I mean, there's great wrestlers on there, and there's wrestlers that people love, but they love the brand of NXT. You know? Yeah, because it's a different style than what the two main uh, brands are right now. So, so and also, it solves about- your championship problem. Mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. if you just migrate yeah. NXT over, NXT has a world champion, NXT has a women's champion, NXT has tag team champions. You move one of the uh, the mid card titles over, boom, four titles. Well, either way, this is us arm armchair quarterbacking this a little bit. So we'll see how the draft develops, and we will have a method to determine how we think a draft should go uh, here coming up on the mayhem, the mayhem draft. Uh, but we'll talk about that later, later, later on the show. Uh, we're going to talk about in a moment, promos getting personal, but I tell you what I like to get personable with. Yeah. I meant to say it that way. It's with that pizza wheels knows what I'm talking about. That slice on Broadway (laughs) right here in Beachview on the main street down in uh, Carnegie PA in PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, uh, supporting Pittsburgh podcast with the finest pepperoni pizza. Also in PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, not the Pittsburgh Penguins, go Pens. Uh, but anyways, go check them out. Rico and the guys are have been kicking ass and making great pizza for years now, and they have become a big staple in the pizza scene in Pittsburgh. So please check them out. SliceOnBroadway.com, PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter. If you're in town, if you're checking out the Pittsburgh Pirates, drop by, get a slice, let them know. Either way that you've heard about them on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. So there you go. 
Hit them up. Slice on Broadway. Supporters of the mayhem. All right, guys. Um, I want to talk about promos. Now, of course, okay. last week we had the scathing promo with uh, Charlotte and uh, Ric Flair, of course. Uh, I, I think Eamon, was it you and I last night talking about the, the promo with Paige? Maybe, actually, you know what? I think I was talking to Missy this morning, wife of the show, on the way to work. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, we're talking about wrestling promos on the way to work. Um, but Paige, with the scathing, art, uh, the scathing uh, uh, promo talking about, you know, Charlotte's dead brother. You know what I mean? Um, and, and, you know... Every time something like this happens, we get a wave of people saying that's too far, that's 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 too harsh for wrestling, and this, that, and the other thing. But I kind of go back to the days when it was Ric Flair talking about how she was he was with Elizabeth before Macho and the Photoshop pictures, right? And 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 and, mm-hmm. and you know Ric Flair's probos that were uh, hidden 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 uh, uh, Ricky Steamboat at home with with his with his uh, kid and his his wife, right? I mean the personal feuds when done well are are the most interesting feuds, are the greatest feuds in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. And I think Charlotte is and Paige, you know, being both second generation wrestlers that they are, um, have a better understanding of that and are more willing to do that. Uh, whether it's the writers, you know, saying, hey, this is what you should do. It's their side, whatever the case may be. Either way, you know, they're, they're complicit in it. Um, but they've delivered on it, too. Do you? And I think, yeah. I think it's interesting because, like, like, for example, those ones that you mentioned about Ric Flair and Elizabeth and, like, Ricky Steamboat and stuff like that, those are really great, but they also don't necessarily, at least for what we know, come from a real place, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like they were actually, like, you know, you know, Elizabeth was actually being, you know, you know, having a, an affair with, you know, Ric Flair or whatever. Like, it was a story, it was a scandalous story, but it was still a story. You know, the stuff, like, we mentioned, like, the whole stuff, particularly the Reed Flair stuff, where you know Reed Flair actually died, and like there's a there's a connotation to it, or Charlotte telling Ric Flair that he, to her to to her he's dead to to her, which is a cutting thing if you know the history of the people, you know what I mean? Like, and, and to me, it almost makes it better that way. Well, I mean, do you guys mm-hmm. remember the the Matt Hardy and Edge, she... the Matt yeah. Hardy and Edge stuff? It came like, from a real place. That yeah, like the Matt Hardy Edge stuff was probably one of the best feuds that both of those guys ever had. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, th- there was real emotion in that, and especially it, it came out in the matches. Like they weren't sloppy, but they weren't soft on each other either. Like mm-hmm. you could tell there were there was some real stuff feuding that. Yeah, their like, their frustrations actually out in that kind of controlled environment, and honestly, and. Maybe people are just so sensitive because this is too much of a PC era. And, I mean, I hate to say it that way, but uh, it, it is. It's like what I saw from Charlotte and Paige was exactly what I grew up watching, was real-life stuff and adding that little bit of wrestling persona into it. And I liked it. I was okay with it. And to me, like... It's almost as if like like there's technically nothing wrong with being offended because that's kind of like it's supposed to make like aspects of like certain storylines like that are in a sense there to make you feel uncomfortable. Like that's almost the emotion that's the emotional response that it should be trying to get out of its viewer is that level of uncomfortability. Like so, you know, I'm, I'm not saying like, you know, people shouldn't be like, you know, upset about this, but like. Maybe if you're upset about it, you're upset about it because of what you're actually seeing kind of play out. You know what I mean? And maybe that's coming from a place where it's not just like, oh, they shouldn't be doing this, you know, blah, 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 blah. It's coming from a place of, oh, wow, this maybe this is taking it too far because I don't know how to take this. I think wrestling, when it can elicit an emotional response from an audience, that is something that audience has never felt before. That's That, I think, is, is a success. You know what I mean? So... I don't know. That's the way I kind of see it. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't always have to be from a controversial place either. It can be like 
uh, when Eddie Guerrero gave an impassioned speech after he won the WWE title. It can yeah. be like um, when, like the promo that Xbox kept right after he left WCW when he when he joined DX, like stuff like that. It can just be go out there and talk, like the CM Punk promo. I mean, Grant he had bullet points in that, but I'm sure that was a pretty natural venting of frustration for him. And it makes things mm-hmm. it makes things come off better, like uh you know, people, we always make fun of the run, but like that whole run of Rey Mysterio going for the heavyweight title, like where a lot of it was based over the stuff with Eddie and like, but it came from a real honest place. Like, and that makes the storyline better. Um, obviously I don't think they necessarily hate each other in real life, but I feel like that's why the Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens stuff is so good is because those guys are legitimate friends and it comes from a real place where they can play off of emotions and play off of the fact that they are good friends. If you did that storyline with anybody else, it wouldn't work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's always, it's always been the best thing that if you believe in what you're saying, it always comes across better. And, if it's coming from a real spot, it's really easy to believe what you're saying because it's actually true. And and who knows? Like maybe not to a, uh, as severe degree as what we saw, but maybe this whole the, the whole Charlotte promo uh, against Ric Flair comes from partially a real place. I have to, I'd like to think that in some way she does feel in the sense that her father has held her back, and the fact that she has been lumped in with her father has held her back. You know what I mean? Like. You know, I get that sense from interviews of her, of her being like, you know, I, I appreciate my legacy, but I want to be my own person. You know what I mean? And and so maybe, now obviously not to that severe of a degree, but who's to say that that's not coming from a real place? Yeah, and I'm sure there are some natural frustrations about Rick missing a lot of her childhood stuff, too, because yeah. we had the same issue with um, Goldust. Like Goldust and his dad had a, just, they didn't talk yeah. for a long stretch of time, mm-hmm. and that's when we got some really classic Goldust stuff. Well, Goldust, and even like look at like old WCW Dusty Dustin Rhodes Dusty Rhodes stuff. Like those are some of the most captivating promos of all time, and yeah. it's coming from a legitimate place of Dusty Rhodes being upset with himself that he wasn't there for Dustin, and you know. And and the relationship that they that they didn't have that made those stories so compelling and so much better. Like th- it's a great thing when you can get that out of a wrestling show, you know. Because as much as we want to be like, oh, we'll suspend disbelief and 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 just go along for the ride, it's nice when some, there's tools that allow us to really suspend our disbelief. Right. Right. So either way, I, so I, I'm feeling. I'm feeling good about this. Like it feels like a good point of wrestling between that, between Kevin Owens, between Sami Zayn, like people just delivering great stuff in there. Right. Yeah. And I mean, and Dario Cueto really killed his mother. You guys, <laughs> he really did. Like that's, that's a real place, I'm man. Sorry. I, I, I want to take, I did throw one asshole woman. I want to take, it's still a real to me guy and get his reaction to Lucha Underground. But Hey, Oh wow! Um, Sorg, Sorg, have you watched the Midweek War? That's basically us. Yeah, but hey, you know, <laughs> uh, Alberto El Patron's first promo in the Temple comes from a bit of a real place. Yeah, it starts on him getting fired from WWE and 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 the stuff that he went through, and now he's just like, I am. This is my destiny. Mm-hmm. To do whatever, and that doesn't come from a real place. And two different things, you know, like. Absolutely. Yeah, like you can you can tell when he believes what he's saying and when he doesn't. Yeah, exactly. Well, guys, we'll talk a little bit more about pro wrestling. We'll have a big question coming up, or uh, or actually, maybe we'll have something else. I, I want to do something after this break. <laughs> what do you something after this doing. break? I don't know. Yeah, yeah we'll, do, we'll do whatever with hey, wrestling. Hey, you know? Sork, Sork, I'm throwing a question at you. You're dodging it. You're dodging it, Sork. Dodging the questions. You're dodging the questions. Dodge. Dodge, dump, dip, dive, and dodge. 
<laughs> but in the meantime, you can check out some great stuff. Hey, we a lot of guys we're we're talking about the Sammy Zanes and the Cesaros and the and the and the Luke Gallows. Hey, you can find some of those guys over at IndieWrestling.us. Um, that's where we have a lot of our friends with the International Wrestling Cartel, uh, with uh, uh, of course the uh, Renegade Wrestling Alliance that Wheels represents over there. Vicious Outcast yeah. Wrestling. We just posted Vicious Outcast Wrestling's Queen of the Ring. You can check out a lady. Wrestling, including friend of the show's friends of the show, wrong ass, uh, Samantha Starr, um, the, the niece of Jake the Snake Roberts, as well as uh, 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 Britt Baker, a part of that tournament as well. Again, one of those feds locally that's really representing women's wrestling, and it's great to see that. Uh, go it out, go check it out, indiewrestling.us. Sign up for the newsletter right there at the top. And uh, you'll get a free download, actually, including some chap named AJ Styles in that uh, show and so much more. Check it out. There's Sammy Callahan drinking a beer out of a pitcher in the wrestling crowd during a match, most likely. Find out why around the Indies, a great column by Matt Carlitz. So much more. Even Evangelistico, we talked to you last week on the Indie Mayhem show. And there's Virgil behind a table with Joe Dabrowski. Find out why. Legend of Virgil and his traveling merchandise table. Prime Wrestling, Best of Prime, Before There Were Stars, Legends and Superstars, uh, Women of Prime. So much good stuff. IndieWrestling.us. We'll be right back after uh, this little bit of message, and, um, and we'll talk more wrestling, what we're going to do about the draft, and so much more. This is Raymond Rowe, and you are listening to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We are back, and the only thing that all of us could agree with during that time is that all of us agree that we don't think Mad Mike was correct in whatever we were discussing. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem Show, where Mad Mike is, has an uphill battle. It's okay, Mike. We love you. <laughs> I'm in the top eight, Sorg. He is in the top eight. We just did, uh, uh, if you go to the WMS Gold uh, 522, if you're a Patreon supporter or want to be, um yeah we we played the myspace game and uh, uh find out what did these guys guess were the top eight on myspace yes they've been hacked but we're still on there we haven't updated but you know we still go see it's like a time capsule of wrestling mayhem show like six years ago it's pretty amazing i just seen is in there dancing with with uh, with lunchbox for some reason you know because we, we used to be able to do that kind of stuff. But anyways, it is time for the big question. And there is a match going around. Not all of us have watched it. We're not going to tar- talk in particular about that match. The uh, Will Osprey and Ricochet match that uh, happened in New Japan. Uh, we're actually going to discuss that on Indie Mayhem Show uh, this evening. And Indie Mayhem Show 122. If you want to check that out. But uh, in the meantime, I thought, you know, it'd be good to go around and say, Hey guys, what's your favorite match? Ooh. Ah, and and and, and 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 I want that to be, you know, not just oh, it's WrestleMania and this and that. You're thinking like, what's your favorite wrestling match? Like a general match? Wrestling like, match? Like a specific like these two these competitors at this event on this date? Yes, it could be a WrestleMania match, but not because it was a WrestleMania match. You know what I mean? I want you know, and not just because it was story. I mean, I think the the match that we're talking about now is like a, a, you know, not necessarily a match with a lot of story around it. It's a, it's a, it's a match that odd, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a tournament. It's a match in a round robin tournament. So. It, right. Right. So it was kind of a drop in match. They did their thing and the story was told in the ring, right? You don't need all the pretense leading up for four weeks to WrestleMania. Right. Um, so with that context, that kind of sliver of an idea, I, I'm hoping that gears you in a certain direction. For these answers. Mm -hmm. And that I just dropped on you and I don't even have an answer myself. I can think of one, but I feel like it's too recent for me to really talk about. I got one. Wheels got one. I know I can count on wheels. Thank you. Thank you. We got wheels. All right. One of my favorite matches, and it's from a company that poor Eamon doesn't want to watch anymore. Um, But this was the earlier years when it was better. The AJ Styles... Samoa Joe, Christopher Daniels triple threat match was one of my mm. favorite matches to watch. Mm-hmm. I could watch that over and over and over again. Hmm. I'm with you. I'm with you. That's that's one I hold in high yeah. regard. And that was in our um our mayhem uh March Mayhem 
uh, selections as well. So mm-hmm. certainly. Any other guys have a uh, have a pick? The one the one that immediately jumps to my mind um, was I think it was 2013 SummerSlam, and that was the Daniel Bryan John Cena WWE title match. I was just thinking about that one too. I really that's one of my personal favorites. Um, the the story combined with the wrestling, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of like edge in your seat kind of moments in that one. Like I'm personally, I think it's much better than the like. Like, we talk about big time, like, Cena matches. I think it's better than him and Punk. Like, obviously, him and Punk had, like, a ton of, like, you know, implication. But as far as, like, the stuff that all came together, like, I think that match is amazing. And at the end of it, at the end of it and throughout watching it, I really got the sense of, like, oh, stuff has changed now. Like, WWE is different now. It's finally, like, that. It's finally, like, a mesh of what I loved from the independents with. WWE like it's it's the perfect meshing of both um right. uh, and and even that the swerve at the end is amazing so Mike? okay um I I can't pick I've been trying to pick between these two and I can't so I'm going to give you two the best I've seen in person and the best I haven't seen in person um the best I haven't seen in person Bret Hart versus Owen Hart WrestleMania 10. Oof. <clears throat> Oof. I, that was in person? Because, no, that was not in person. Okay. That was not in person. Um, I was too young to go to the garden at that point. Yeah. Um, but that, I was the biggest Owen Hart fan. Um, I was not a Bret fan at all. My sister was the Bret fan. I was not. And that was the only time Owen ever really got over on Bret. And it was just such a well wrestled match like no one expected owen to win it kicked off the show uh everything about that match was great but man you Um, you know what the beautiful thing about that and i don't think i stuck around with wrestling too long after that i think that's when i kind of took my break but did owen really need to beat brett again for that to work Yes, for the title at SummerSlam. Well, okay, other other than that, but generally, <laughs> but generally, yeah, yeah, he yeah, yeah. To. He needed to. Okay, okay, uh, but, but but look, you gotta think best, that lasted until SummerSlam. Just on yeah, that well, one, like also, I beat you like, when Brett won the title at the end of that show, and everyone celebrating with him, holding him on his shoulders. There's Owen standing in the entrance way, oh, just missed like, opportunities, missed opportunities, pissed off, just mm. so fucking pissed off. It was the best. But um, favorite one I've seen in person, I have to say Survivor Series 2002, first ever Elimination Chamber. Ooh, yeah. Spectacle. Um, Spectacle. My my favorite wrestler of all time, Shawn Michaels. Brand new gimmick match. Uh, really well wrestled match. We had no idea what to expect going into it. And it was Shawn Michaels' last major title win. So really yeah. special for me. I have... A few pieces of the confetti somewhere around here. <laughs> so I saved because I like went down to the lower bowl in MSG and grabbed some of the confetti. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. Well, okay. I want to go with uh, I'm going to go with one I saw in person. Um. I I I remember going to the taping. It was I think the first Ring of Honor that Matt Carlin's had been to. Yeah, and Jen Carlin's as well. And we saw that was the night they had. AJ Styles and Matt Seidel. That was still like an artistry of a match. And it's from Ring of Honor TV. You could find it um, from well, probably like two years ago at this point, right? Um, out of Wheeling, West Virginia, down there at that arena. And uh, it's, uh, it, w- it was still like, it's it just one of those, like I'm seeing something special here kind of matches, right? Um, and that really, that really does uh, stick out for me. So that's awesome. mine. Yeah, I'll also add to, as far as since we're going to live wrestling, like one we've seen live, um, I would argue, and then they're very recent, but the Zack Saber Will Ospreay and the uh, Ricochet Will Ospreay matches I saw WrestleMania weekend this past weekend, Oof. or this past WrestleMania, um, those are super special because it's they're I would say they're the best in ring matches I've seen live. And the fact that I was with about a thousand people in like a barn, basically not a barn, but like something that was made to look like a barn, like, and everyone was losing their mind. Like there was something kind of really special about that. So 
I'll, 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 include, I'll include those as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so from the chat room, we have a few answers here. Uh, Bobby F. J. Towns is still his favorite match of all time. Is and probably will always be Kurt Angle versus Shane McMahon from King of the Ring 2003. I need to, I really need to, or 2001. He says 2001. Uh, shit, 2001, as he says. Uh, I, I really need to rewatch that match again. I'm, I'm all overdue. overdue. Tragar, Flair Sting, the 45 minute draw. I feel like I watched that more recently. And, and, and yeah, it's pretty good. There's a lot of Clash of the Champions stuff that I really need to get into. Uh, Matt says uh, he says he doesn't think he can disconnect story from wrestling, and really in the long run, you know, I, I, I want to focus on the wrestling. But again, if it's if it's too big, that's fine. Um, yeah. Okada Tanahashi from years ago hooked him on New Japan, and he knew next to nothing about either guy going in. Uh, and Styles still had the IWGP title; it was in our presence. Oh, when we did when we saw the thing, yeah, that's right. Uh, when we saw the Ring of Honor match with him and Seidel. Yep. Oh, man. Let us know what is your favorite match. Focus on the wrestling part of it, of course. And uh, and like I said, let us know your your thoughts on uh, Ricochet and Will Ospreay that we're going to be talking about on Indie Mayhem Show 122. Look it up if you're catching us later. or Stick around here for a little bit on the live stream. So we talked a whole bunch about... I'm sorry, I'm doing this a lot tonight. Uh, Mouth sounds. uh, But anyways. The draft. (laughs) <laughs> the presumed, the presumably draft that's coming up here, for for sake of argument, maybe we're going to be halfway through this thing and we're going to find out there will be no draft. But what if, what if mayhem was split into two, into a civil war, if you will, and pit against each other on the slack on the show to make the better raw. And the better SmackDown. Eamon, I believe you are the architect of this <laughs> plan. Uh, nice. I'm architect. Is I, Seth I, Rollins? Yeah, I'm Seth Rollins, guys. Look at my double dyed hair. Um, uh, no, I, I, well, it was an idea that we kind of brought up once the stuff was sort of happening, but uh, I kind of composed like all the, the, the official things of how things are going to go down. Uh, uh, and and we've we've made a lot of decisions when it comes to like how things are gonna work out for this thing and and uh, yeah we are going to be doing our first and this first ever time we've ever done this in Mayhem Show history in ten years uh, but we are doing a mock draft um, this will be very fun uh, basically <laughs> this isn't just you know we get a general manager for for Raw and a general manager for SmackDown imagine if like if Shane McMahon and Stephanie McMahon were each made of five people. <laughs> so we've got a team, so to speak. We've got, we, we are both on teams uh, uh, to make the better show, basically. Uh, and and that will be happening throughout the weeks, like Sorg mentioned, until the eventual brand split uh, that will be happening. So uh, uh, I guess to talk about it, the first team, uh, I guess we are affectionately calling it Team Midweek War, yes. since it's most of the people who are in the Midweek War. Uh, and it's representing Team SmackDown, and that is myself, Mad Mike, Bobby F. J. Town, uh, the E. Riz, and uh, Matt Carlins. Or not the Riz. Uh, um, no, Garza. 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 Excuse me. Uh, uh, yes. So that will be the, uh, the SmackDown team. The other uh, team, Team Raw, will be composed of Sorgatron, uh, uh, the E. Riz. Hot Wheels, uh, our good friend Alex Cars, and uh, the one only Dettos. So, uh, based off of those I five, like my team. <laughs> your team has a lady on it, we know. Um, but yeah, <laughs> based on that, we'll basically kind of be going from there. Uh, um, I believe we're going to start this officially next week, if I'm right. Yeah, I believe I believe so. We're going to do a couple weeks of drafting. Yes, a couple weeks of drafting. Uh, I'll, I'll break down the rules real quick. Uh, I, I said. And obviously we're in virtual world, but whatever. Uh, we'll be doing a coin toss. That coin toss will determine who goes first, and then the teams will alternate drafting members to the roster. Uh, each week there will be 10 draft picks made by each team, resulting in a total of 40 members on each uh, team's roster. So we'll be doing this for a month. Um, only individuals can be drafted, uh, i.e. in order to draft a tag team or a stable, you must draft each individual 
of that team separately. So there's no collective drafting of guys. There's you draft uh, single people. And uh, only in-ring wrestlers uh, can be drafted. Managers, uh, which I was like, we got to make a rule for managers, but there's really only two managers, actually. <laughs> Maurice and Paul Heyman uh, will be included as a package with the wrestler that they manage, i.e., if you draft The Miz, you get Maurice in the package. You cannot draft Maurice separately. Um, Damn. Uh, yes. <laughs> Took the words out of my mouth, Mike. <laughs> Uh, and then championship belts that are held by members of the current roster will not be included if they are drafted. Um, basically, we are drafting as if it is implied that each of our show will have a heavyweight title, a mid-card title, a tag team title, and a women's title. And then each every member of this show has been given uh, a list based off of uh, – which actually I may need to update because they've added – like literally I made this list based off of WWE.com's roster page. And they added people to the roster page. <laughs> <laughs> like who? Uh, some NXT people, but it's oh. whatever. Um, Something tells me the people they just added to NXT probably will not be drafted. Who, uh, hey, who knows if you want to draft Liv Morgan or not? I don't know. Um, oh, actually, okay. I wouldn't mind Liv Morgan. <laughs> but you know, the Jersey but, Devil. I mean, come on, Eamon. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there's a list of uh, the main roster people and the NXT people. There's no limit as to who you can draft. If you have to draft a certain amount for this time, if you want to go all one way, go all one way. You know, this is going to be a strategic thing. And like I said, this is going to play out in the coming weeks uh, here on the Wrestling Man Show. I don't know if this will be as huge of a hit as our our Mayhem Mania, but. Um... That we did for WrestleMania, but th- this is a new experiment. I mean, I mean that did mm-hmm. go over so well, and and you guys and, and let's 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 see what happens here. Let's see let's see what Sorg. happens when we pit Mayhemer against Mayhemer. Yes, Sorg. Mm-hmm. It's time to shake things up again. So we're going to start this next week. <laughs> yes, we start this next week, and also as we've been kind of playing with in the chat room, we're also going to do a draft. We should do a draft from show to show. <laughs> okay, the Sorgatron Media Network, and see what happens. And and uh, can't wait till I'm on Awesome Cast. Yeah, it'll be great. It'll be great. It'll be the it'll be the Sorgatron Media Podcast Exchange Program. I got drafted to fishing with bait. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I wasn't going to include a client podcast, but but there you go. Oh hey, man, hey, too bad we weren't. Has docile tones. <laughs> yes, there it goes. I'm amazed how many wrestlers have come up. Why to did me. I get drafted to just a Snapchat? <laughs> <laughs> Weird. Weird that I'm on basic sorgonomics, but I'll go with it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Today on basic sorgonomics, this is where I guess what Sorg was doing today. <laughs> oh, we're a wonderful family, <laughs> guys. Guys, let me know what did you learn from wrestling this week. <laughs> Who wants to go first? <laughs> I, I learned. Uh, I learned from wrestling this week that this Charlotte Stephanie McMahon promo is going to be great, guys. It's going to be so good. Can't wait for Stephanie to <laughs> take the belt off of Charlotte because that's what he should be reading. Really it's not like she hasn't been the champion before. True. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to be happy about that fact, but. You know. No, <laughs> well, no, because when it here's the thing: the title when she won it didn't have any fucking meaning, anyways. She mm-hmm. didn't, like the champion before the person she beat was Harvey Whippleman, so let's let's get that straight. But uh, yeah, and, and yeah, it's whatever. Yep. Oh, Mad Mike, what yeah. you learn? <laughs> I learned from this week that. Uh, I need to pay attention to my local indies because apparently we are getting Jeff Hardy versus Jushin Liger and Jeez. Cody Rhodes versus Kurt Angle on the same show. Jeez, in Ooh. your area? I saw that's NEW. That's the one that I worked with last yep. uh, last summer. Yep, and they're going to be 40 minutes from my place, so as long as I'm not working, I may be going to that. There you go. And I will try and interview Cody Rhodes for the show. Ooh, Ooh but, yeah, but, that up. Like I, thought, I thought Kurt Angle was retired. No, 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 no. He he just wanted to leave Orlando. Yeah, who doesn't? Who doesn't? He, they actually revoked his pass for Universal Studios, so it's not like he even wanted to leave TNA. He just couldn't get back in the building. 
Oh, so oh, there, there was there was an incident with a Dudley Do Right puppet character. We oh. we try not to talk about it. Be careful so, out there. Yeah. Looks like we got an echo there. We're working on that. Um, you know what? I think I think they could work in. Uh, I think Cody Rhodes would go to TNA for a free pass to Universal Studios. <laughs> I I think he'd rather go at Disney with, with all the Star Wars stuff going there now. That's true. That's yes. true. That is true. He is a Star Wars man. He loves his Star Wars. That is true. Wheels. Wheels. What have I learned? What have you no. learned? What have I learned? I have learned I love heel AJ better in WWE now. Oh, yes. And I can't wait to see where this goes. Yes, yes. The club, too sweet. We're getting sued now, right? Um, Yeah, no, looking forward to that, to see what happens with that. Um, I learned, I learned, um, I can't wait to get more Nakamura promos. (laughs) <laughs> sorry we can't understand him though no 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 but that's okay <laughs> he can't either i, I love it you guys catch that when he just started cutting the promo yeah. in japanese and say oh i'm sorry you don't understand <laughs> <laughs> i well no when Air, when airy said i don't understand you nakamura said i don't either <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing that's amazing yeah. oh nxt you're doing all right you're doing all right also, by me Sorg, from yeah. the Twitter. From the Twitter. Uh, Brendan Cascioli learned that Goldberg fits inside a shed until he just explodes. Oh, for <laughs> fuck's sake. I assume, that, <laughs> I assume that is sexual in nature. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did anybody catch the suplex city and the windshield? Yeah. For Goldberg? I did. Uh, uh, trust me. Uh, all right, all right. Sorg, Sorg, you, you give me a one shot. Uh, all right, all right. All right. Real talk. Wait, 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 wait. Did you just I, I wait, did you I just, never, I've, did you just smodcast my Batman ass? Wait, did you just... I've, I've been listening to a lot of Fat Man and Batman. I apologize. Yeah, me too. But, me too. But real talk about if Goldberg you, and Brock Lesnar. If you ever direct me on this podcast again. <laughs> <laughs> Sorg, I'm sorry. You ever Kevin Smith me on this <laughs> podcast Sorg, I, again. This is why I got drafted to Snapchat, damn Your it! Your ass is not directing me all the way from fucking Poughkeepsie, okay? Hey, hey. <laughs> Who works for the WWE, Sorg? I'm big league in this shit. Not Are you, you on my team? Is he on my team? Where's that? Okay, that? Good, you're not on my team. Good. Good. Of course, Anyways. Sorg. Sorg. You, you, you're, I do the midweek war. There's your you fucking know. one shot. Tell me what you want. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Um... <laughs> Who the why is that? <laughs> um, but yeah, as far as Goldberg looking at a Suplex City sign. Hold on, hold on. No. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I don't like how you started that. Take okay. two. Okay. Take two. <laughs> Sorg's the one doing the directing. <laughs> yes. Sorg just, so just wanted to up, one up me again. Uh, you, have um, to, you have to establish your territory around here. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> um, Goldberg looking at a Suplex City sign. Um, no, let's let's never, ever, 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 ever do that again, please and thank you. Sincerely, someone who was at WrestleMania. Did 20. anybody else? Yeah. Did anybody else notice in? The video promo, the ble- the black goatee, but in these newer ones, it's gray again. Yeah, he's not nourished. Like he looks bad. Like what? What? Fu- like you can't even like like do any like like effects or whatever on him to like you know make him look like like actually. Yeah, like they did effects. Right? Well, at least we know he's going in the Hall of Fame. Like they gave him a. Was that Amen? Oh, we was kind of that Aaron? Um, but yeah, oh, no. Oh, sorry. So, are you back? Wheels, you're cutting out all over the place. We, yep, I think, I'm here. I think Wheels, you're on a little bit of a delay, so please bear with us here. Um, but anyways, Goldberg aside, was there anything else from Twitter? 
Uh, no, I just saw I just saw that one tweet. Okay. Was there anything from the Facebooks? There is definitely stuff from the Facebook. Hold on, I'm yelling at you on Twitter right now. Uh, so and tweet. And by the way, guys, the it was lovely being on the Wrestling Man Show. I'll see you again in a month and a half. Yeah, guess who just got drafted? The panel riot. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm coming for you, intern Stan. Um, anyways, there was something I was trying to get to. Yes, there's things in here. Uh, Traegar also learned that a friend uh, that went to one of the OKC Thunder playoff games uh, talked to Shaq, and Shaq told him that he would be at Mania next year facing Big Show. So there's a scoop for you. Ooh. You heard Ooh. it first from Traegar. Um, but, you know, Shaq said that a couple times, though. Yeah, I, yeah. He is, and plus, now Shaq is a lot older. <laughs> Didn't stop him from being in a battle royal he didn't belong in. But that was a fun surprise. An actual advertised and booked match. Mm, manage your expectations. Also yeah. from the chat room, Bobby F. G-Town says, uh, he, in addition to what he learned on Facebook, which we'll get to, he also learned that Vince allegedly said that Sasha Banks only has one speed, quote, and that she's too injury prone, to which I say, I learned that I want Vince McMahon to retire. Shady Pines Vince? Okay. Also, Trey Gar learned that having Cody Rhodes around would come in handy next time I need to go to Target. I don't get that one. I don't. What, what happened there? Um, Cody Rhodes made a list of the people. Oh, he to the list. Oh, the list was pretty fantastic, too. No, uh, Wade Barrett's list was better. Yeah, it was. It was, actually. Um, from the Facebook page, I'm going to mute this up a little. I'm get a little bit of an echo from somebody. Uh, Tragar on the Facebook says, having co- oh, that, that, that was the other thing. Uh, Bobby of Town also learned that as much as he'd love to see Heel Cena, he's relieved that he is uh, not the new leader of Conja Club. Okay. And uh, Gabriel uh, has, we've been talking about podcasting on the group, actually. And he says, podcasting is a blast and I'm addicted to it. I don't know if that's what you learned from wrestling, but I also haven't listened to his podcast yet. So like, I, there, I, I don't know. As soon as I figure out what that is, we'll plug it because I don't think he posted it yet. So, um, but I'm waiting for that. If anybody, hey, if anybody out there, while we're on that subject, if anybody out there is like starting a podcast, especially if it's about wrestling or something um that's a listener of the show you know please kick it our way let the listen give you some you know give you some feedback uh uh share it you know uh, uh, get other people to listen to it feel free hit us up at that email address good times at wrestling mayhem show.com or anything else wrestling thoughts uh, you want comic books whatever i don't know just say hi just say hi yeah we will plug your shit yeah we will we will don't be shy we can also drop a slime 412 206 WMS0 Wrestling Mayhem Show.com where you can subscribe to everything on all the fine podcast places, including now Google Play uh, podcast section. And uh, and of course the video versions on Facebook where we've been playing with Facebook Live or at least getting parts of the show up there apparently tonight. Uh, and of course the uh, uh, YouTube page where all the videos are and some old interviews and everything. I dug up. I didn't realize that was missing. But uh, I, I had trouble finding our interview with Gregory Iron from back in the day, around when like CM Punk like gave him a big thumbs up. Um, it, that came up, and I, I couldn't believe that it wasn't on our YouTube or anything like that. So hopefully that'll pop. Hopefully I'll get a, get a moment to uh, re-edit that and post that on our YouTube as well. There's a lot of if you remember if you any long time Mayhemer. So that's a lot of you guys in the room remember an old interview um, that you really dug. Because I can't remember all the people we've talked to, to be quite honest. Um, um, go to that search at youtube.com. Yeah. Wheels? No. Um, <laughs> go to uh, youtube.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Hit the search function. See if we have that up there. If not, let me know. I will go find that audio. I will edit it. I will put it on YouTube so so people can find that archive. I, I know there's some missing in there, and uh, and apparently a few of them are on MySpace. So, uh, but we do have a lot of great interviews we've talked to uh, over the years. Uh, Jerry Sags from the Nasty Boys, Zima Ion, formerly Shima Zion, over the years, Dalton Castle, friends of the show uh, that we we talked to so many. We talked to Blue Meanie. We've talked to jeez, uh, uh, who else? Zach Gowan. Uh, Gregory Iron, as Eric, I've mentioned. Eric Young. Eric Young. Way back in the day. Babyface Eric Young. Before the beard. Cody Deener. Cody, Cody Deener. Deener, who's tearing it up up there in Canada right now. RJ City, who's making a lot of waves. Um, um, geez, so many great, great names that we've had over the years we've here. Sarah Del Rey on. Sarah Del Rey, who is now teaching the new generation of ladies kicking ass on Monday Night Raw and NXT. So awesome, awesome, awesome to see. 
uh, so many uh, friends of the show uh, representing right these days. So Corey Graves had him on multiple times. Yeah, I was gonna say NXT is basically like an extension of the Mayhem show. Let's 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 uh, let's not spit hairs about it. Eric yeah. Young's there, Corey Graves there, Sarah Del Rey's there. Like I mean, come on. Yeah, Elias Samson naturally, Johnny Gargano. I mean, come on, it's right there in black and white. There it is. There it is. No. Or black and gold. Fair enough. There you go. Let's go, Pens. Let's go, Pens. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. <laughs> Let's go, Pens. At Aiming to Please, the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling is InspireProWrestling dot com. Mad yes, Mike, Mad Mike at Mad Mike four eight eight three on the Twitters and also on the Midweek War on our Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com and so many of our channels. And follow hashtag MM for when I live tweet Impact and Lucha Underground. Yes, and of course. Who could forget wheels at Hot Wheels, RWA, RWALive.com, our Renegade Wrestling Alliance on the Facebook, and also over at IndieWrestling.us. Check out the past shows over the years. Corey Gray is also a part of that promotion. The Patriot has yes. been showing up, and we're talking to two members of that group tonight on the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm at Sorgatron, Mike Sorg, here in Pittsburgh. Say hi to me, SorgatronMedia.com. We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. You guys are cool.